Hey, it's Carolyn. Today I want to show you how I um, do a lot of the names that I do on cakes. I do a lot of different ways, which I'm going to be posting a lot of different um, ways that I do names. But this, today, I'm making this name Zoe. And um, this is Grobold font. I think that's how you say it, Grobold. And I measured the side of my cake, which is about four and a half inches tall. And I printed this out on Microsoft Word, the size that I want it to be on the cake. So the letters I believe are about a half inch, I mean, not a half inch, an inch tall. So print out the name that you want, the size that you want first, and then I will show you what to do from there. Okay, so what I have is marshmallow fondant. You can use any fondant, gum paste, whatever. Um, it's rolled out to about, uh, it's really thin. What is that? Like an eighth of an inch? I don't know. So I rolled that out. I, I mixed it with some Tylos powder. Um, I can leave a link below for that. Um, you mix a little bit of this with the fondant and it helps stiffen it up. So mix some fondant with the Tylos, roll it out really thin and let it sit for about 15 minutes so it can stiffen up. I have an X-Acto knife with a sharp blade and I have a needle tool which is my favorite tool because I use it all the time and a wet paper towel because I'm constantly wiping off my tools. So what I do is I take the name and I always have a cutting board underneath and I lay this on top of the fondant that I'm going to use. And I take this needle tool and I just start poking holes around the edge so I can, I'm basically tracing the letter onto the fondant with, through this tool. Now I don't do it exactly up on the edge of the letter. I do it a little wider than the letter, which allows me to um, cut the letter a little smaller if if that makes any sense I don't I don't know why I'm explaining it like that if you if you put the dots right here on the edge of the letter then when you cut it it's gonna be smaller so I make it a little bigger and that way when I cut it it's the normal size I hope that makes sense so when I um, notice that the the needle is sticking through the fondant that's when I start wiping it off because it starts to pull up the paper so just keep going through and poking holes all the way around. All right. And you could do this with any font. I just, I find that I go through phases of fonts that I like. Right now I like Grobold and Bromello. I don't know why. It just is what it is. Okay. So I have that done. Take it off. And I have the outline of Zoe on this fondant. So now I take my X-Acto knife and I start to cut out the letters. You wanna cut on the inside of the dots. If you cut too close to the dots, then you'll be able to see uh, dots in your letters, basically. And I've done that before where I cut too close and I just have to go in and cut a little more of it off. Because you want these lines to be sharp. All right, so we got, after I take it out, the edges, I don't know if you could see this, you probably can't, but the edges aren't perfect. They're a little jagged and they're a little fuzzy, if that makes any sense. So I take my finger and I smooth it just to make it look perfect because I like when things look perfect and pretty. So there's the Z. All right. Um, what I usually do is just place the letter back on top so it takes the same shape as the one that you cut out. So we got that and we move on to the next one. I 
All right, always cut the center of the letter first before you cut the outside. Because if you cut the O out first and then try to cut the inside, it makes it difficult. So that's just a little tip there. All right, so now I got the O. For the inside of letters, what I typically do is take, well, I could use this, a tool to smooth it out. And then smooth out the edges on the outside. It is time consuming to do this, but it just makes everything look so much cleaner. All right, on to the next one. So now I have the E cut out and I'm gonna smooth the edges. Now, in a letter like this, it can get a little tricky. You wanna handle it very delicately so you're not messing up the letters, but you do kinda of have to maneuver some things out of the way so you can get into the smaller areas. Here's another tool that I really like. This actually, it's a Wilton tool. It came in a flower former set. It's not sold by itself and I'm, I have no idea what it's called. I feel like 15 years of doing this I should know and I have no idea. So it's just the tool that I like to use. So one end is a little pointier, one end is a little flatter, and I'm always using this to get into little crevices to smooth things out. Then I go to the flat side and maybe push it down. I don't know. Is that weird? Maybe it's a little too much, but it's what I do. So here's the E and let me wipe this again. And by the way, you're not allowed to make fun of my nails. I don't know why I had her do it different. It's my OCD. It's driving me crazy that she did two different fingers, but whatever. Only have to live with it for three weeks and then I'll change it. All right, here's the Y. Smooth it out. Some letters are easier to do than others because there's not much little areas on this one. Okay, let's still flatten this one out here. All right, so I put that down. So now what I do, I want a white background on this. So I have another uh, piece of fondant rolled out really thinly that's been sitting out. So I am laying that down here. And I have a little bit of water and a, a paintbrush that I got at a craft store uh, just with a little, little end to it. So now I take my letters and I wet the back of them with just a little bit of water. You don't want to use too much because then it'll seep out the sides and be a mess. So just enough to make it wet so it sticks and then place it down. And then I take the end of this. I love this because it's a flat end. Can you see that? All right. And I just kind of maneuver it so the letter is perfect and straight. Because sometimes when you move the letters, it distorts them. So I'm going to use a little more water. And yes, I say water. I'm from Philly. People tell me all the time. I shouldn't say it like that, but whatever. I say water. All right. Here, here's the O.
Okay. I, I spaced them out so I have enough room to cut around all of them. So now I take my X-Acto knife again, clean off the edge. And you have to have a good eye for this so you and a steady hand, so don't drink too much coffee. So start a little bit. I mean, you gauge how big you want your border to be. And you want to try to make it uniform throughout. So just going a little bit further out than where the letter is. The Z is a really easy letter because it has all straight edges. And there we go. So then I smooth the edges again, just like I did before. Sometimes I cut out the middle, the center of uh, letters, and sometimes I don't. I don't feel like doing it this time, so I'm not going to. Round letters are a little more difficult. Just want to make sure that you're uniform throughout. And I'm like crazy right now about making sure that I had the spelling of the name right. I check like 500 times. There was one time I did a cake where the kid's name was Chance and I thought it was Chase. And the lady came to pick up the cake and I had the wrong name on the cake. And that's another reason why I always text a picture to people before they pick up the cake so they can see what it looks like and um, I can have their approval before they come and get it. So always make sure you have the right spelling. Just smoothing the edges. It's a funky piece sticking out here. And there we go. Here's Zoe. So you can, I usually um, make my decorations in advance. So you can let it dry or you can put it on the cake right away. I recommend if you're going to dry this and you have to put it on the side of the cake that you take a cake dummy and you let the letters dry on the side of the cake dummy so they take the shape of the cake if you want that. I may have to go up like this. Because sometimes I've made I, like big decorations and let them dry flat and then I can't press them to contour against the side of the cake because they dried flat. So this is just an option, but you can let it dry um, however you want. And they're, I mean, these are still pliable, but they're, I, they're ready to put on the side of the cake. I usually put it on with a little bit of water or a little bit of piping gel. Um, and there's your name. Pretty easy. So I hope that helped. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like this. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.